I'm not an elite athlete, I'm just, I'm really just a recreational marathoner. Still see myself as a social everyday runner. I'm just trying to improve. So for me, what is an easy day, a slower day, whatever phrase you want to use, is uh, it's usually, um, I consider it definitely nine minutes, uh, nine minutes a mile to 10 minutes a mile. Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Now you might be wondering what I'm up to, showing footage of three prominent YouTubers who are all aiming for the Rotterdam Marathon with a sub 220 target. Well, I thought I'd have a look at their training on Strava because it's quite interesting because they've all got slightly different approaches and almost want to see which approach you think is best and which outcome you think is most likely. So the race is on Sunday and I'm recording this on Thursday evening, Friday morning. So it'll be interesting to see what actually turns out in the race. But let's have a look at their Stravas and see what we can see. So first up, we've got Matt Fox. He's the founder of the Sweat Elite channel, which records training sessions of all the elite athletes. Very interesting footage because they sort of show the raw footage. You can just hear the sounds of the carbon shoes on the road usually. And there's no sort of background music and you hear the sort of chat and the banter during the sessions and before the sessions and all that stuff. And then we've got Nick Bester, who's a South African living in London. He runs his own coaching business and has also recently aligned with Adidas as one of their London run captains. So he's a very good athlete with a uh, current PB of 2.24 for the marathon and he recently won the Cambridge Half Marathon in 66 minutes. And you've got Seth James Damore, who's one of the most prominent running YouTubers. He's from Denver, Colorado in the States. He's perhaps best known as a mountain runner, but he's been running marathons the last couple of years with a PB of 2.23. He's got ambitions to run 2.17.30, which is the OTQ, the Olympic Trials qualifying time for the next Olympics for the Americans. His PB is currently 2.23 in Amsterdam from a couple of years ago, but he does have a 65 half marathon, which I always thought was a far better performance than his marathon so far. Now, each of these three runners seem to record all their training on Strava, and as they're prominent YouTubers and on social media a lot, I think it was fair game to analyze their training. So as is customary in my data analysis videos, I've compiled a spreadsheet. First of all, I looked at their weekly mileages and I've done it from the start of this year until the end of last week, because this week is just basically a taper week. So I recorded their weekly mileage each week and plotted it on a graph. And you can see that Seth is averaging 100 miles per week Nick is at 91 and Matt is a bit less at 68. But Seth has basically had a sort of a peak earlier in the year. He's actually been sort of reducing it a bit on his quite a heavy taper. So he's the green line here. He, he did actually start his training block a bit before Christmas, but he reached about a peak in mileage in sort of mid-January. And he's been slowly sort of easing off, but he, he does run the most amount of miles just, but though the average now has been coming down because he hasn't been running so much. Nick has sort of gone almost the other way. He started his training in earnest sort of about the same time as Seth was seemingly on the wind down. And he's reached a couple of hundred mile weeks recently. And Matt, because he's traveling the world doing all these videos, his training is perhaps a bit more sort of hit and miss, but he did spend a lot of time in Kenya in the early part of the year. So some of those mileages were actually at altitude in Kenya. And he's also been to the UK and Portugal of late that I've seen. I've also had a look at the longest run each runner did each week and plotted it out here. And you can see that the longest run that Seth did is, was 23 miles. And the other two were basically just, just an inch short of 25 miles. And their averages is fairly similar. At Seth's average long run each week is 20 miles and the other two are 18 something. What well, is interesting that Seth does far more long runs, a lot more over 20 miles than the other two. And he's the only one that really perhaps does sort of long runs at sort of an easy pace. What I've also had a look at is the type of mileage that they run. So I've broken it down here into three types of sort of harder running as I would call it. So we've got traditional marathon pace mileage, that's mileage around their sort of target, which for them is conveniently about a 315 kilometer pace or a 515 minute per mile pace. So I looked at whenever they were doing that sort of pace, give or take about five seconds and made that their marathon pace. And then also recorded if they did sessions fast night, typically track sessions and stuff like that. And also there was quite a lot of running at sort of what I call like an aerobic threshold mileage. So for them looking to target about 515 pace, I thought, well, any running around about six or six minute 
mile pace or under, typically on sort of long runs, I'd count to that as aerobic threshold miles. So in the graph here, I've added up what was their marathon pace or faster miles. So basically their sort of quality miles. So it's interesting, as you might have guessed from the opening titles, how the different approaches here. Seth doesn't really do too much hard running at all. So here's the green line here at the bottom. And during the course of the training block since, since the start of the year, he's only run 72 miles at marathon pace or faster. 13 of which were in a half marathon race. But if you compare that to Nick, who's done 239 miles at that intensity, and Matt, 184. And if you break that down further, then Nick has done by far the most amount of faster miles. A lot of track sessions he does, maybe two track sessions a week on average. So he's actually run 177 miles faster than marathon pace, in addition to 61 miles at marathon pace. Now, Matt is a bit more sort of even, and he's also done a lot of aerobic th threshold runs. So he does a lot of like long runs, around about a six minute mile pace, something like that. So he started his training quite late and did a couple of those long types of run and kept them up fairly well. And then he's also added quite a lot of mixture of intensity. So although he's not running as many miles, he seems to have got himself fit really quickly. Whereas Seth takes a very sort of pragmatic approach and as you can see here, for the first three weeks, he didn't really run fast at all. And then he only introduced sort of marathon pace um, to, towards the end of January. And then it sort of started off by just doing some threshold type runs, as he called it. But really, that was his marathon pace. And then he didn't really do too much running faster than marathon pace at all. I mean, I counted his mar half marathon there where we run a 68 high but really if he's hoping for a 217 marathon that was basically running a half marathon at his marathon pace and so he did a few track sessions but they were only just marginally faster than his target marathon pace so it's interesting the different approaches here so Nick and Matt have met up a few times to actually do some training sessions together. They did an interesting one here. They weren't actually together here, but they did the same session at the same time. They did 3 by 10 k with a 1K float between them. They started off a bit slower than their marathon pace. Then they did a 10K basically on their marathon pace, then a 10K a bit faster. And then Nick did an amazing session here. He did 34 minutes, 33 minutes, and just under 32 minutes. I think Matt managed to make the same pace for the first two, but he then did the third one, didn't manage to speed up, did another 33. So, but it's hugely impressive impressive running so if we look at a summary of all these things this is the miles that they've done since the start of this year to the 6th of april so seth has done the most amount of miles just just over 1300 compared to nick at 1235 and matt is just under a thousand but interesting is you can see that the difference in times here Seth is running for far more time than Nick, even though he's only run a bit, a bit more miles. And you might think, well, he's at altitude and a lot of elevation. And yes, his elevation per mile at 48 feet per mile is higher, but not amazingly so. I mean, considering Nick does a lot of running in Battersea Park, it's quite interesting that his elevation was actually not that much lower than, than Seth's, really. And Matt, despite the fact he's been in Kenya a lot, his, his elevation was quite low uh, compared to the two of them. There's our longest runs again, again very similar, but interesting that Seth hasn't actually run a full marathon in training because of the amount of miles he did. And then there's a summary again of the total at marathon pace or faster. And you can see how much more miles Nick did at that intensity than Seth did. And then if we add in the aerobic threshold miles, then Matt then becomes the person that trains the most at that intensity. I thought we'd also look at the sort of the 80-20 rules. 89% here means that Seth does 89% of his running easy and only 11% of it harder on this 80-20 rule. Whereas Nick is almost bang on the 80-20 the exactly, 78% at uh, easy intensity and just 22% a bit harder. And then Matt, because he runs less miles, I think he's basically having to make up with a bit more quality. So, but interestingly, he's also got the fastest PB. If we look at the races that each of them did, Matt did a 10K early in January at 30.50. He said he was a bit disappointed with that, but that uh, he did his PB Marathon 2.20 in Indianapolis late last year. And he actually, interestingly, has the fastest PB of the three. And his target is 2.17.59. So he's looking to improve by three minutes. Seth is looking to improve by a whopping six minutes. And it's interesting that the half marathon he did in... Florida was 68.57 and you might argue that was quite of a humid day but he did look quite tired but if he wants to run a 217.30 he's basically having to run his half marathon race twice over and a bit faster 
So 5.16 pace in the half marathon there. He wants to run about 5.15. Now, Nick, I think, is probably in the best form of all three of them. He ran a 66.19 to win the Cambridge half marathon about a month ago. And his PB is actually the slowest of the three, 2.24. So if you're a betting man, looking at their training, the form, you might think, well, actually, Nick is probably in the best form. But does he have the ability to keep it out for a marathon? Now, Seth's training is a topic of constant debate. How is he possibly running all these sort of slow miles and hoping to run so much faster? Well, you would have to say that the best performance of all these PBs here is probably the 65 half marathon he did, but it wasn't, interestingly, of late. It was actually um, last year, not this year. So whether he's in quite that form, he's over three minutes slower in the most recent half marathon. So what do you think of these three different approaches and who do you think is going to be the most likely winner of the of these three if there's actually a little race between them? I was hoping to include Matt Reese in this video as well but unfortunately he's injured so I'm almost certainly he won't be running because he doesn't seem to run for a month according to Strava. So I'll be looking out for the result of this race with interest to see which approach has worked best. Which approach would you take from Marathon and is it similar to any of the three that I've documented here? Please comment below. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and all that and I'll see you in the next one. Well, by the way, thanks very much for uh, getting me to 3,000 subscribers. I've got a little um, fun video planned for that, but I'll have to do it over the weekend when there's a bit more time. Okay then, bye.